Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Ben. Hello. Hey, Christian. How are you? I'm doing well. Getting ready to travel. I'm excited. But uh, for Ben, for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? All right. So I am Ben Stedjink, and my last name, like, nobody pronounces it right. But there is an advantage to this, Christian. I am literally the only Ben Stedjink in the world. So, like, go Google my name, Bing my name, Duck, duck go my name, whatever the verb is you want to use, and I'll pop up. So if people do want to find me, just search for me. Um, but yeah, I, do I often think about that. Other Christian Buckley's out there that I need to, you know, uh, go because there can be only one. Uh, you yeah. know, it, it must go and, and destroy them. But, uh, you know, in my spare time, I, I don't have time right now for it. Yeah. So anyways, that's, if you want to find me, that's an easy way, but I do Microsoft 365 consulting. So I started my own company. It's like 12 years, 12 years ago now. It's been a while. Time flies. Um, but doing more IT pro, I don't like dev stuff. I don't like writing code unless PowerShell accounts as code. Um, I love writing PowerShell. I'm not going to do any JavaScript or C sharp or any of that. Uh, so consulting, I have a podcast. Um, some of your watchers, listeners may also know Scott Hogue. Um, he's been in the community as well, particularly the SharePoint community. So he and I both go way back when it comes to SharePoint. Um, but he and I have been doing a podcast for about five years now. Uh, your, your head is blocking the logo behind you though. It is duck. There you go. And that's cloud, IT Pro. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, do that podcast, talk all about Azure, Microsoft 365 from the IT pro side of things. Um, play with Lego. You can see I got Lego everywhere. I got Lego over here and Lego over here. And the pirate ship is actually like a set from the eighties from when I was a kid. Ooh. I have Legos. Yeah. Dating all the way back into the eighties. And now I just get bigger and more expensive sets now that I'm older. Yep. Uh, here in Jacksonville, I forgot, where am I? Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, little bit warmer down here most of the time than most places yes it is yeah this is what we were talking about before like i i can't imagine though living in a, in a place that's always like that the temperature like we were in hawaii in december and it was like it was great to do that but besides the fact that i get island fever like it's just too small of a space and after a week you're like all right i'm ready to get off the island uh and even back into the cold and, and it's beautiful it's nice but uh, to have it warm like that all the time like i i couldn't do that yeah, and to be fair, that's actually what I like about Jacksonville as opposed to you get further south, like Tampa, Orlando, they have much more of a consistent temperature. Hmm. Um, we get our cold days, like Christmas or on Christmas this year, we actually got down in the 20s at night, highs in like the 40s and 50s. So we get a couple days of cold weather every year. Um, but I grew up in Michigan. I, I still have my Michigan mug. I have Michigan mug. I'm still a big Michigan fan. So sorry to any Ohio State fans that are listening or watching. Um, <laughs> but I like my cold weather yet. Um, yeah. I still enjoy having that variety. So I don't know that I could go any further south in Florida. Um, staying up here on the north side of Florida is good enough for me. Yeah. I, you know, we've talked about uh, as we're building a house and in, in moving to Dallas this summer, you know, this is our last winter here in Utah. And I, I, I like the snow, but I realized that I like visiting the snow. <laughs> yes, there, there is something to be said. We visited the snow this year. We went up to Michigan for Christmas. Um, and I don't know if you remember, like there was that massive cold that went through. Um, there was like a big cold front blizzard. So we actually had a blizzard warning in Michigan while we were up there. Got 18 inches of snow. Woke up like Christmas morning and the wind chill was negative 20. Nice. Um, it was cold. My kids still bundled up. I got four kids. They all bundled up, went and played in the snow. So it was a well, good that's, time. That's great stuff. Well, that's what I'm looking forward to do. I've got uh, great. I'm heading to, to Minneapolis. I think it's snowing there all day today. It's uh, we've got reports of that as well, but it's, it's not happened yet here in Utah, but uh, heading up into the hinterlands and 
going to play in the snow with my grandkids uh, after this event. I'm doing the uh, M365 Twin Cities event. Okay. I but, saw that. I yeah. am not headed up for that. It'd be fun. I'm, it's going to be great to see people. Yeah. I'm getting the itch. I haven't been to an in-person conference in a while. And I'm like, I got to find one. Um, well, there's more and more that are popping up. I mean, this is their first. I mean, they were, of course, folks that don't know, they were doing two events a year. And so this is their first since the pandemic so uh you know so it was the yeah, fall of 2019 was their last one i believe and uh yeah i've done a few like i was in copenhagen in december uh for an event and i was in june in the uk for uh commsverse and things like that it, but it but even seeing like the formerly known as sharepoint saturdays the m365 saturdays and collab day events and stuff are slowly starting to pop up again for in person and i'm a I'm a huge advocate. We're planning our, our event for Utah. It will be in-person only, no hybrid. Okay. So we're, we're going to do something like we we're, we'll promote it. Hey, if you want virtual only, like we've got our user group, there's plenty of content online, but we're going to focus ourselves that are people that on people who are there in person and not worry about who might or might not be paying attention online. Nice. That'll be, when is that one? I might have to come up. Are you going to do it? During we just we just got our date changed, so we're struggling with the venue. So we're we're even looking at potentially. So it might not be until like August or September. Okay, that would be a nice time to visit Utah, though. It's a great time. We we won't have our share ski event that we usually have in February, but we'll do something. We're thinking about doing like even people that want to come out do like a guided tour of like maybe go out to Moab or something, go see some rocks. Okay. Fun. I used to go out to Utah. So I had a buddy that had a place. Um, well, his dad had a place uh, at the base of Park City. So we'd go out there and like ski for a weekend in Park City. And it's... personally, I think Park City is one of the most boring parts of the state of Utah. Uh, but <laughs> there's so much nicer stuff to go and see uh, than that. And I think better skiing, cheaper skiing for sure. But all right. Well, that, so Ben, yeah. so tell, tell us, tell me, like, what was your path to becoming the MVP? A long one. Um, so it's, I, I will say it was an interesting path. Um, and I don't know, it, it kind of came and went. So maybe six or seven years ago, I say a long one, six or seven years ago was actually, I think when I got my first nomination. Hmm. Um, I, it was right before, or maybe it was right about the time I started the podcast. I was running a couple of user groups here. Um, I was still doing the SharePoint thing. So I had a SharePoint user group. Uh, I was doing an Azure user group, had an Azure user group, and um, was first nominated back then by a friend of ours, Andrew Connell. He's yeah. in Jacksonville as well. So AC and I have known each other pretty much ever since I moved here 10 or 12 years ago. Um, and filled it all out and kind of... Um, I was all excited. I was like, oh, I got nominated, fill everything out. And then I got denied. And I just kind of kept going at stuff. Like, I what, love. Did they, did you get any, any explanation? Did they give you any guidance or uh, you know, on that? Because sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I'm trying to remember. I think the very first time it was, I don't think I got any guidance the very first time. Hmm. Um, I don't know how much it, I know it's changed quite a bit, even that process over the last six or seven years. It's a black box. Nobody knows whether yeah. it's changed or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I suspect I it's changed. yeah, but I still loved what I was doing. Like I love doing the podcast. Um, we have actually managed to release an episode at least once a week for five years. We've never missed a week of wow. an episode. That's great. Um, so I love doing that. Like I love speaking at events again, getting to know Andrew and introductions there. I spoke at, I would speak at events down in Orlando. Um, I did get to speak at one ignite right maybe four years ago. Um, did some of the SP cons. Um, so just kind of kept speaking, writing blog posts a little bit. I'm not a blogger, much rather talk. Yep. Um, so podcasting speaking was a lot of those types of contributions that I would make um, and got to know a lot of people. I don't know when we first met, I kind of, we'd run into each other at events. Um, 
a lot has happened the last decade yeah. in the last decade right exactly so got to know a lot of different actually a lot of different mvps a lot of different speakers there's there's a group of people that kind of go around and speak at a lot of these different events um and it was interesting sometime in the last maybe three years or so i actually got a little disillusioned with the mvp thing hmm. um I would go to these different events. Again, I knew a bunch of you and I would be talking to all these friends, all these speakers at the MVP summits. And it would come out that I wasn't an MVP. And they're like, really? Why not? Oh, oh okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I kept getting nominated. I would fill it out. And a couple of times I got guidance of more community contributions, all of this and really did. I just got disillusioned with it. I'm like, everybody thinks I should be. I fill out the nominations, I put everything in there, and I'm not. So to your point, it was kind of a black box. Mm -hmm. And I just kept going at it, going at it, um, just doing, again, kind of doing what I love. It wasn't like I stopped doing stuff because I wasn't getting nominated. I just kind of kept doing the same things over and over again. Right. Um, and four or five months ago now, um, one of the partners I do some work with, um, I do some consulting with them, more of a contractor for another consulting company. Uh, they had a regional director that works with them. And he's like, Ben, you got to do this. He's like, you absolutely should be an MVP. You need to do this. So he uh, encouraged me to do it. He put my nomination in again. Um, and this time, again, black box, it, it all worked out. Got nominated back in September, October, filled out the nomination. Um, and got the email like it wasn't January one. It was a holiday. I was one of those few that got the email on January two. I think. Hmm. Yeah, I think oh, that's wow. what I came through. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I. I mean, hey, look, look, that can happen depending on what ha falls on that first day. Because I mean, Microsoft, they are gone on holidays. That you know that right. that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's yeah. Sometimes you have to remember it's 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 humans that are actually pushing those buttons and setting exactly. those things down. So. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that was kind of the path. And I would say it was a lot of, I had some times where I was disillusioned with it. I was like, I'm on, I was convinced there was like an MVP blacklist and somehow my name got on it or something. I don't know that there isn't <laughs> a, a blacklist, but I, I like there's a, a because I, I know there's some, some, some folks who uh, for years weren't <laughs> able to get it because of things that they had done. And you know, that, somebody who it, it may have been because somebody else at Microsoft finally left Microsoft that opened a pathway for somebody like there's that stuff real again, it's people. And yep. uh, yeah. So I, I, sometimes I, I, I joke, you know, somebody who can't you know, get in there is like, well, who did you piss off at, inside <laughs> Microsoft? You know, what, what did you do, Ben? All those years. <laughs> I don't know. I never got any feedback on it yeah. other than just keep trying. And yeah, I would say I've talked to others and, Again, my path, I was like, it may take a while, but don't, in my experience, again, don't do all this stuff to get it. I would say do this stuff because it's what you enjoy doing. Again, I love doing the podcast. I love speaking. I don't run, love running user groups so much. Um, the last- It's hard years, work. It, it is. is. It is a lot of work. It is. Three years with the whole work from home stuff and hybrid, I would- I kind of just let those go. Um, whether I'll ever spin up a user group or not, or not um, I don't know, but I'd much rather go speak in person as we were talking about. Go see people, do it in person. Speaking at hybrid events is hard. Running user groups is hard. I want to go speak in person again, do the podcast. Um, I actually have a Facebook group too. I didn't mention that. I started a Facebook group oh, sometime over the last three years for like, Office 365 and Microsoft 365 admins. Yeah. I just looked the other day. It's up to like 13,000 people now. People, I, I was just telling somebody this uh, earlier this week that uh, that said, should I go pay attention to what's going on in Facebook? I said, look, I mean, you, you divide your time how you want. I said, but uh, some of the technology, the Microsoft technology groups, there's one, I think one of the teams uh, uh, communities on there has like 60,000 members. Yeah, it's, it's so like, hey, you should go and there. Probably there's more engagement 
happening there, certainly than any LinkedIn groups um, that I'm a member of. And it's it's less chaotic than Reddit or or even Twitter on there. It's a bit more organized. Um, yeah. But yeah. That's what I've found. And I don't do a lot on Facebook outside of that. Uh, like I'd be perfectly fine if Facebook just reinvented itself as groups. Um, I have like a tab opener link to go to like two or three Facebook groups. I don't ever scroll the social feed anymore or do much of that. I, yeah, I publish stuff, but yeah, yeah. same thing. Um, scroll, the death scroll, you know, avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. The group it is, there's a lot of engagement. Um, I've put a couple of things in place too. Like I right or wrong people I've seen arguments both ways. I don't allow anybody to post links to YouTube videos, blog posts, job postings, any of that. Like, I don't want it to become a group that's just a bunch of people marketing themselves. Right. Um, any of that, I go in and delete it. Um, it is purely, I have a question or I'm trying to figure something out and I need some feedback on it. If you have a blog post or a YouTube video that addresses the question, great, go ahead and post it um, because you're helping somebody out. But what, don't. Sorry, I was just going to say, like, what what is the what is that site? We should mention that. I don't know if I'm it part of that one. Is, I don't know. I lost my mouse. My mouse is disappearing. If you search for Office three, I think it's Office three sixty five slash Microsoft three sixty five administrators. Um. Let's see what we find here. Uh, I see this. That might be it. Private, visible. I'm gonna it is private. I do have to let you in. It is not a wide open group because. All right. I just, uh, uh, yes. You ask those basic questions. Uh, there's pain point. Uh, uh, like yeah, you have a pain point dealing with me. And about other people's and then because i'm always looking for questions with the amas that i do and other content yeah. i'm more interested in what kind of questions are people asking like i respond and try to answer questions in the communities i'm a member of but a lot of times i will try to surface that through the amas that i go and record and i, I and i a few times i would go like what you don't allow i would go and when we answered a question go back to where the question was asked and said, "Hey, we did, we recorded this discussion of five MVPs sitting around, and we taught, taught, we answered this, you know." And I was just like, "You know, I don't have the time to sit and go find and then post the stuff. Like, I don't do that. It's it's out there, but um, but I'm always looking for content. So, I, all right, I just uh, so I just tried to join that. We'll see. We'll see. All right, adds me, confirm me. Fingers crossed. I'll and, let you know as soon as my computer. Yeah, I'm no worries. Zoom is going because my mouse is like. Yeah." Yeah, no worries. Well, listen. So, um, it, like, last question is, uh, you know, I mean, you talked a little bit about what you're like focused on. Like, what, what big announcements or what, what things are you really passionate about right now? Like, what are you really focused on, or whether or not you're writing about it, working on it? You know, what, what kind of in the Microsoft ecosystem are you really excited about? So, I won't say I'm working a lot on this. I can't, I can't wait for the Microsoft Loop app. To actually drop. Yeah. Um, yeah. The app itself versus the components. Right. The right. components have not been very useful to me. I'm hoping the app will bring back my love of putting notes within something in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem again. Yeah. Um, I have struggled with OneNote as of late, like just random stuff. Um, I can't do OneNote. Well, but a lot of the OneNote, like, so I love OneNote. And I use it all day, every day. It's always open. And it, I, it's just the, because I've developed like my system for writing and taking notes and capturing that I use it that way. But I am also excited because the Loop app, whether they name it something else specifically, I, I don't know, but it's almost like the it's the next gen word. Yeah. Know? And so I'm excited to see it. Right. I'm, I'm curious to see how all of that, um, shakes out, come to fruition, what it looks like. Um, I would say from working, there's kind of a couple things. I've really gotten into some of the Microsoft 365 uh, security stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Conditional access policies, the security center, 
throwing stuff into Sentinel, Microsoft Defender, some of the endpoint management. Um, as I transitioned kind of from SharePoint on-premises, because that's where I got my start into SharePoint online. And you said it correctly. Thank you. <laughs> I, you know what, that is a pet peeve. I need to do like a YouTube short about it is on premises. It is not on premise. Right. Or on prem. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. But it, yeah. On premise would be like a literary statement. It's like, it's, it's on the, it's on premise. It's on Mark for the premise of the story, but it's yeah. not on premises, uh, which is the, you know, the, the, like on location at the data center, the physical location. Right. Um, but yeah, as I kind of get into the Microsoft 365 cloud from that admin IT pro perspective, there was a little bit less to do with SharePoint. So I kind of started expanding my skill set out to more of the Microsoft 365 administration as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of the security stuff is really cool. There's a lot of fun stuff to do there. Um, the other thing that's really exciting me, and again, this I know there's a little bit of controversy over this is some of the stuff coming to um, teams with the team's premium license and the AI stuff. Uh, yeah. I've been working with some clients, even with the team's phone system, uh, deploying physical phones, migrating from some of the old traditional PBX systems that they have these legacy phone systems and rolling out teams and teams phone and again, integrating it all with Microsoft 365. So yeah, just that whole ecosystem. Um, it's exciting to me to see how Microsoft really took SharePoint Exchange, Skype, the Office products, because that's kind of how it all started off. Back when it was BPAWS and Office 365 was a productivity suite, and it has expanded into like a full-blown device management, security, seeing how it's grown and how you can really almost manage your entire IT infrastructure from the Microsoft 365 cloud has been really fun to see and work with over the last few years. And I think it's just going to get more and more fun over the next few years. I agree. It's, it's, uh, I know that, uh, Jeff Taper, um, who, for the folks that know Jeff is the, is the, what is the godfather of, of SharePoint. Yeah. But he is as the his new role. He's the president of collaborative apps and platforms. I believe that's the, the title. Um, so he owns SharePoint and Teams, Yammer, OneDrive, kind of all of those. Um, and he talks about how the last couple of years he felt like he was a uh, broken record, kept saying it's like this is the biggest year for number of releases. And like last year, there were 450 different uh, uh, changes, releases, uh, to teams over the course of the year, 450. That's crazy. And he says that this year, 2023 will be even bigger. So, uh, he said, I'm not just saying that it's like, look, you get the roadmap and what we know is on the board. It's going to be bigger than last year, which was bigger than the year before, which was bigger than the year before. So that's a not lot, a lot coming. Matter. Right. People are like, I go in and every day there's something new. And it's like, well, yeah, 450 releases. There's only 365 days a year. There probably actually is something new every single day of the year. Yep. Um, and that's what makes it fun too. Like I love being on the bleeding edge, playing with new stuff, figuring out new stuff. So being in an ecosystem where there's always new stuff, um, it's fun. It is. Well, well, Ben, really appreciate your time today and, uh, and chatting and I, I'll, I'm sure I'll see you sometime in the near future. Uh, are you doing Vegas in May? I, I am not. I I struggle with Vegas, in all honesty. Yeah. I, I have asthma going in a casino with a bunch of smoke. Yep. Allergy yeah. nuts. Um, I, I'm not a Vegas fan. He's a, a non-drinker, non-smoker, non-gambler. Yep. Vegas doesn't do a lot for me, but yeah. But uh, but all the conferences have been there lately. So I might have to break down and head out to Vegas again here. Well, I am, uh, I, I'm definitely ramping back up and getting out to more events. So I'm sure I'll see you sometime during the year and lots going on. But in the meantime, Ben, folks that want to find you one more time, like how, what's the best way to reach you? Where, where can they find you? Best way Twitter is at Ben Studging. Um, LinkedIn is Ben Studging. Uh, those are probably the best too. You can go to my website, benstudging.com 
Um, my company is intelligent.com. It's I-N-T-E-L-L-I-G-I-N-K. Um, little goofy spelling, but that's my company. Any of those, uh, probably the best way. Again, Facebook, I don't tend to do a lot on there. Um, and then the podcast, mscloudITpro.com is the podcast if you want to find that. Check that out. And of course, I'll have the links to all this stuff out on my blog post and on Buckley Planet as well as you'll find it on the podcast as well. And, and on YouTube in the description, you'll find the links to all those things. So, so Ben, really appreciate your time and we'll connect soon. Awesome. Well, thanks, Christian. Thanks for having me on. And it was fun chatting for a little bit today. Wow.